Hi guys, this is Scribbly again with another pen review and today we have in fact something quite special right here in front of our eyes and this is the Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir special edition from the Heritage Collection. Before we dive right into things, I want to say thank you very very much to Joost at Appelboom Pennen in the Netherlands for sending this pen for review. Before we dive into things, let's have a look at the box of this spectacular pen, Rouge et Noir. You already see that right here at the packaging. It also says it again here, Mont Blanc Heritage Collection, Rouge et Noir, uh, special edition. It's a special edition pen. Uh, got the fine nib right here. It's a fountain pen, obviously also uh, available uh, in other uh, writing systems and uh, has a gold nib. You slide out the package right here and you get this uh, special edition packaging in black and red. The pen that I have right here is the black version. It's also available in red. I think in the meanwhile, it's also available in something called tropical brown and like in uh, some marbled finishes. You can look that up on appleboom.com if you're interested in it or on the Mont Blanc website. Out of the special edition package comes a package that is quite recognizable for uh, Mont Blanc pens, uh, sort of like a structure surf structured surface here. The Mont Blanc logo right here looks sort of like the packaging of, you know, uh, Mont Blanc 146 Meisterstück or something like that. Inside the packaging, you have a very, very nice booklet, you know, speaking a little bit about uh, the Mont Blanc Heritage Collect Collection. I don't go through that in depth right here. I'll just leave it like that so you can read it for yourself. You then also have a little bit of description what Rouge et Noir is about. You know that it's about like a pen that was originally developed in 1906. And now sort of this pen here sort of like commemorates that. Um, but well, you can read through that yourself. Very, very nice booklet as a matter of fact. And then in the end you have the uh, warranty. And as said, I got the pen from Appleboom for review. Thanks very much. Used, much appreciated. Guys, let's dig into the pen. I think the pen at first glance already sort of like, I don't know if it looks 1908 or 1920 or something like that, but it definitely does look vintage-ish. You know, the old fountain pens, they were often rather slim, slender, smaller pens. I think it definitely with the rounded, uh, with the rounded shape and all that does have a, a vintage-ish appearance. And like now that we dig a little bit deeper into the pen, uh, that becomes even more apparent. Let's look at the most interesting part of the pen, as I think, which is like this in proportion, rather short cap right here. You have this like sort of like creamyish off white Mont Blanc logo, the snow cap up here in red or surrounded by red, which is very nice. Of course, like the off white right here does give it already a vintage ish look. Then you have like sort of like a knurling right here around the pen, which is reminis reminiscent of the old safety fillers. You then have like a very, very beautiful snake or serpent clip, uh, which is sort of like also, you know, shows some, uh, I don't know what we should call that, brassing or something like that. It definitely does show some kind of patina, which also does make the pen appear a little bit old. You then saw right up here the serial number. Now the camera focuses. That's where you find the serial number that reflects the one in your warranty card. And then you have like this beautiful serpent clip here, black, red eyes of the snake. Very, very, very beautiful. This is also a very useful clip. It's quite springy, slides very safely into a shirt pocket or into a pen pouch. And then you have like sort of like engraved here, uh, Mont Blanc in black with the with the Mont Blanc right here. This is sort of like the old Mont Blanc logo that you also found find on the very old Mont Blanc vintage pens. So this is very very beautiful. You then have sort of like a slightly 
uh, tapering down cap then the pen does taper up right here a little bit again you then have like a straight barrel you then have like a silverish but also a little bit you know i don't know is it anodized or something like that it definitely does also look a little bit it's not it's not a hard shiny silver it's like a silver with a little bit of a patina to make it look slightly old as well that obviously is the piston turning knob right here because this pen is a piston filler and then a very nice rounded uh, piston turning knob right here so overall a very 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 beautiful pen design I said a piston filler let's get off the cap and let's count how many twists you need to get off the cap that is one full turn one and a half to one three quarter full turns to get the cap off i think that's great makes it for a relatively fast note taker i think by from two plus turns then that's when it gets a little bit you know intolerable for me at least personally uh, one three quarter turns very good inside we do not have any inner cap um, but I personally never had a problem with the nib drying out. The pen does always write superbly when you take the cap off. Look at this very, very beautiful cap. Fantastic. And it exposes a rather smallish, I think number five size gold nib, having a very, very beautiful serpent stamp right here looks really cool also the triangular shaped breathing hole is very beautiful i have it inked with one of my favorite orange inks right now um this is a uh, jay harbin uh what is it called orange indienne i think uh, uh you see the ink sprinkles and splatters up there the nib then says mont blanc 14k au585 au for gold 585 for the gold content very very beautiful this is a fine nib as said feet down here very beautiful nib um we have um that part down here that obviously allows the cap to screw on and then we have like a rather smallish section which is also not hard silver it's also this sort of like uh patina ish silver to match you know all the end ring and all this uh, patina patina ish uh, parts of the pen there's not a very large step down onto the section here and it's fairly fairly tapered and longish tapered meaning that you can actually find the grip of your pen wherever you want it's very nice that uh, that uh, stuff here is down there because um you probably not grip the pen right here so meaning you can really find the grip wherever you want without without touching this part down here it's a fairly smallish pen as said it's a fairly slim and slender pen i'm doing size comparisons in a bit i'm normally not one for slim and slender pens but like that one here works very well for me uh, interesting thing is like that that metal section probably because like of the way the surface is treated right here uh, is not very slippery at all so i normally have problems with metal sections uh, uh, you know the kind of uh, lamy studio or something like that i can't deal with that but that one here works very well very well for me one thing that you do also see is that the pen is a so-called mystery filler so there's no ink window you know whenever you run out of ink you run out of ink um, I mean, I don't think that it's a it's a massive problem. I assume that somebody that buys this pen right here does not buy that as their only pen. It's probably not your first and only pen. It's probably an addition to a collection. Then probably you're a pen uh, aficionado, which means that you probably have more than one pen on you anyway. So, you know, then when the pen is empty, it's empty. You just take another one. And then when you're home, you ink it back up again. So I don't think that that is a is a is a you know big deal the pen has like a nice weight to it that's something that i noticed it's a very smallish or like it's not small it's not a short pen but it's a very slender pen but uh it does have quite a bit of heft to it that's very very noticeable which is nice because it lays very nicely in the hand it's a very well balanced pen it's not top heavy it's not front heavy um let's see if we can post the cap 
Yes, we can. It doesn't post very deeply, but it also doesn't really post, as you can see right here, very straight. Um, it also becomes, it doesn't become top heavy, obviously, because it's a very smallish cap, but it becomes very lengthy, not unwieldy. I mean, you don't feel it, doesn't throw off the balance or anything like that, but it just doesn't really sit good. And, you know, it doesn't post fairly deeply. I would say that this is a pen that is just generally not really designed to be posted. Um, let's do a quick size comparison. Let's maybe do a size comparison to a Mont Blanc 146. Um, because maybe you already have a Mont Blanc 136, or maybe that's something that you uh, want to see the pen beside. So that's what it looks like. So the Heritage Rouge et Noir is like slightly shorter than the 146. I'll show you right here what I meant with the off-white cap, right? This here is like the regular snow white snow cap. This here is the off-white one. So you definitely see this is a very large and recognizable snow cap and it's definitely very very off-white giving it this uh, vintagey appearance that's what they both look side by side and here you obviously see also like the glossy platinum platinum plating and rings and you see how this platinum plated adornments compare to these like slightly you know patina-ish treated surfaces. Let's uncap the pen and see how it compares to a 146 uncapped. That's sort of what it looks like. So as you see, the Rouge et Noir is quite a bit slimmer, but it's not shorter. It's pretty much exactly the same length, I would say. That's what the nibs look beside, side by side. As said, this is a number six size nib. I think this is a number five, so it's quite a bit smaller. But I think it fits the overall, you know, proportions of the pen very, very well. Towards the end of the review, or the size comparison rather, let's compare it to my standard size reference pen, Alami Safari. That's what it looks like, the Rouge et Noir, a tad shorter and uncapped. also a tad shorter. Again, when I have those two pens in hand, I recognize the nice weight that the Rouge et Noir has, a lot heavier than uh, this one. Let's talk price before you hop into the writing sample. I think price is really okay. I mean, like this is a more Blanc, obviously it's going to be an expensive pen. Um, it's a special edition. So that one here goes for uh, 630 euro at Appelbaum pen. And, uh, a uh, Meisterstück, the platinum plated one costs about the same. The regular Meisterstücks are like 50 euro cheaper or so or less expensive. They're like 580 euro or something like that. So I think it's fair to say that this special edition Rouge et Noir here sort of like costs the same amount of money than a regular Meisterstück, which I then think is almost even a fair price, right? I mean, obviously, it's not a 200 euro pen. It is a Mont Blanc, so you pay that price premium right there. But all in all, I think it's a, it's a very competitively or like fairly priced pen in terms of, you know, Mont Blanc pricing and uh, luxury pricing right here. Let's do a writing sample. You see the pen comes straight up, which is fantastic. I mean, like I had it uncapped for quite a while right now in the course of this review, but it came straight back up. Which, uh, which I think is a great thing. So let's just wait for the camera to focus right here and then we can do a writing sample. So here we go with this fine nib. Mont Blanc. Rouge et Noir. Fine gold nib. So this is a 14K nib. Um, as you can see here, um, it does run a little bit on the broader side of things for a fine. As you can see right here and, and the O and stuff like that, it is also a pretty wet writing nib because it does lay down quite a bit of ink. Obviously, this here is Rodia paper, so it's not super absorbent. 
very, very, very beautiful nib. Um, the nib does write with uh, quite a bit of bounce. This is with no pressure. If you give the nib a little bit of pressure, you end up with a significantly broader and wetter line. As said, it is like a wet writing pen. The ink is a rather wet ink, um, but it's a very, very pleasant writing experience overall, I must say. It's a very smooth writing experience, but the nib does have a little bit of tooth to it, which I think makes this overall for a very, very, oops, don't roll away, for a very, very enjoyable and pleasant writing experience. Guys, that was that more or less uh, with that review. I think it's a very fantastic pen if you're sort of like a Mont Blanc fan or if you're a vintage pen fan or you like vintage looking pens because this obviously is not a true vintage pen. Uh, this pen may actually be a very nice and welcome addition to your Mont Blanc collection. It's the same price range as said as a 146, which I find very uh, fair for a special edition pen. You know, very cool. Thanks much again, Joost, uh, at Appelboom Pennen right there in the Netherlands. Drip camera, focus. Now you do. Thanks for shipping this one for review and I hope the review was useful and I'll see you at the next review. Ciao, ciao.